people, including myself, sometimes mix up invasive and introduced. An introduced species in a given area was brought there by human activity recently in the past few hundred years. Modern globalization and travel methods, starting with deep sea water traffic and ending with modern plane flights, are the entire reason the plant world, along with everything else, has gotten a recent shakeup. There are many plants that did not involve an environment suddenly being there. Because of association with humans, these plants are often specialists on disturbed areas or places recently cleared of vegetation, something humans love to do. There's a special category of plants that aggressively spread and push out native species from their homes. These are invasive plants. One reason they're able to do this, they have no natural predators they evolved with. Things like caterpillars or microbial diseases often are big factors in limiting plant populations. These organisms are often very specific to species, with a species of caterpillar and a species of plant evolving together over thousands of years. So, freed from their worst enemies, introduced plants can have a huge advantage over native ones who may still be locked in battle with their worst enemies. So most invasive species are introduced, but not all introduced species are invasive. There are many that in fact do much more poorly than native species. The many factors influencing plant health and growth include things like soil minerals and a plant evolved to grow in clay soils won't do as well in rocky soils. Traits such as fast growth, resiliency, and vegetative reproduction can also make invasive species. Tropical plants have an advantage in some cases because they're more used to competing with other plants in a thick jungle. And a species actually doesn't have to be introduced to be considered invasive. For example, the USDA has classified honey mesquite as invasive despite it being for sure native to the southwest because it takes over cleared fields and forms dense stands that push out other native species despite itself being native to the area. One reason it can do this is because it has extremely long tap roots. Some have been uh, found to be 200 feet long, longer than any other species in the world. And it also produces a prolific seed bank by producing a lot of these beans, which are actually edible and the greatest single wild plant food source historically among Southwest natives. I've seen my other videos about that, but anyway. And there's a final term, naturalized, which means it's an introduced species that has been present in a wild context for a long time and essentially behaves like a native one, not pushing out other species, integrating within the food web, and not relying on temporary or disturbed areas only. A lot of people think that non-native equals bad, but I think we're capable of more nuanced view. I think we should consider the goal is it to have a healthy, balanced ecosystem or to restore some vision of what we think the environment looked like 500 years ago. The latter, in my opinion, is impossible especially simply by removing non-native species. Ecosystem compositions were drastically changed since the initial contact with the European explorers spread disease throughout North America, killing 90% of the population that was formerly deeply involved in the ecosystem management for thousands of years. The forests that the first Europeans encountered on the East Coast, which are now densely forested, were back then open savannas with trees spaced far enough apart for a prairie to flourish. And this was the case for most of North America, with environments being intensively managed by natives with fire as well as massive herds the bison, passenger pigeons, and other keystone species that are now extinct or much reduced. Oh, what's crazy is uh, right after I got done mentioning about the keystone species that are now extinct or much reduced, I saw two beavers coming off that creek bank on the opposite side of the creek, and they got into the creek and swam upward. It's crazy. I've I'm not sure if I've ever even seen a beaver in Austin at all. But anyway, they formerly used to be a very important part of the ecosystem in North America, but then were in a large part trapped out. But to me, it's nonsense to say this species is bad or it should be destroyed because it's not native. But if it's invasive, there's a clear reason to destroy it. And that's because my goal is a healthy, balanced ecosystem. Introduced species can be part of that. To destroy them, you usually must have innocent casualties, such as destabilizing soils or poisoning groundwater. It can be worth it in the worst cases, but I think we need to learn to live in the new global world to make compromises to have the best communities. And that includes accepting some recent arrival plants that help cover our yards and roadsides.